trying to cut the teeth of the crocodile. Well, I'm just glad it's only done on the drawing up on the top of it. I'm not going to apply it everywhere, just in some areas. Little spots with the gouache to give it a little sort of sparkle in the eye. Hey, I'm Leila. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I will cover a very popular technique where we will combine watercolor painting and pen ink drawing in one artwork. We will paint and draw a crocodile. I will show you the whole process step by step to make it easier for you to follow along. The drawing part of the crocodile is a little bit complicated, so heads up to my patrons because I will post a photograph on Patreon to help you with your drawing process or you can always just print it out and use it as a coloring in page. So I hope you choose to join in or you can always just sit back, watch and relax. So guys, another thing that I want to let you know is that in this sketch I will be testing out this paper, sorted on special when I went to the art shop last time and I just thought why not I'll give it a try. Now I have masking tape just to give me a nice clean edge when I've finished and um, as I said I will report on this paper as I go along to see if I like it, what kind of a you know texture it gives me and how the colors look on it. So the first thing I want to do is I want to start with the drawing and I'm going to sketch out the rough shape with the pencil first. I already have some videos on how to structure things, so if you'd like you can always look those up. So I usually start with the simple geometric shapes and then I get into more detail. Now this stage you probably cannot see much on your on your screen because the camera doesn't pick up really fine lines but very soon it'll become more visible. So then I start to go into more details um, but still looking at the average sort of a, sorry overall shapes and only then I start going into the details. So now there is a neck here. And the joy is on finer, I think. So weird how it looks like the crocodile is smiling. And now we're going into more detail, especially around the jawline with the teeth. I just want to mark them down while uh, I'm still working in pencil. Trying to cut the teeth of the crocodile. Well, I'm just glad it's only done on the drawing. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to create a sketch in much more detail, but using a pen. Now, this pen hopefully does not run with water. This is what it says. It says that it's waterproof. And I guess we'll test out the pen if it's waterproof or not at the same time. So because my lines were just, pencil lines were just working as a guide, I can go around and move, you know, my lines to the right or to the left. The bumps on the skin, crocodile skin is very bumpy. Okay, now I'm going for more. Oh, 
So soft lines, you see how I'm just sort of joining few lines together and harsh lines, you can just go with one strong line. Bigger than what I've drawn here. I'm going to go more into the texture of the skin. and create these little bumps and texture Ugh, I'm smudging it And here I can already see the texture turning into more of a squarish rather than a roundish sort of lines. That's the problem with this pen, it becomes quite runny, quite inky. So I have to wipe it, otherwise I get splodges like this. And it becomes more and more like almost kind of like a net here. Okay, so that's his arm. Some darker spots there. Okay, and I'm just gonna keep going. And here, even though its belly is getting a bit lighter, you can still see all the lines. But it's so much more just like lines now. these little markings here okay so you always also have to pay attention to the lines so because they move um, with the, you know with the shape of the animal okay so here we get some really tiny little textures and let's look at some skin texture around the eye and some shadows so little dark areas that I'm just marking through now and then a couple of black spots there I'm not really sure what that pattern is there but it sort of goes around like that and now, um, yeah, those little bumps here and some pronounced patterns on the skin Lots of little dark spots up on the top of its 
nose, snout, I think it's called snout on crocodiles but I'm not sure if I'm wrong, please correct me and because it's quite a complicated um, image what I will do is I will put a photo of this on my Patreon for um, patrons that get extra videos for those tiers so they can print it if they want to and just use it as a coloring in page very faint lines on the bottom here there are some darker areas but sort of sh it's shown more in like little spots they're quite this is a baby one so it's quite cute big eyes cute little sharp teeth but when they grow up to be adults oh my goodness it's so scary some more shadows on the skin fold by the armpit and now I'm going to go around and I'm going to create more of that extra bumpiness okay there's a darker spot here and yeah, a couple of these ones I've put those through maybe some more here like that okay so there we go so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to wait for the ink to dry properly and then I'm going to erase all the pencil lines you know um, I'm not gonna do it now um, because I don't want to smudge see I already smeared some of the ink there um, although I would like to encourage you to draw this out um, because it is a very good learning uh, process but if for some reason you can't or you, you're too nervous about it I will take a picture and I will post it on my Patreon and um, starting from the $8 tier you will be able to just print this out um, on any kind of paper you want and then you know use it more as a, as a coloring and page okay so what I'm going to do now, now that it's more or less dry, the ink, I'm going to start with the background and because on the image it sort of has like these greenish kind of shades and things like that I am going to keep it in a very similar manner and I'm just going to use this brush as something new, very cheap so I'll give this a go, try this out I will also um, use salt for the background and this is what I'm going to start with I'm going to start with the background I am going for the greens this this brush that I got this is like a new thing it's like a calligraphy brush and the cool thing about them is that they supposedly hold a lot of water yeah I do like this paper so this is wet and dry technique if this work was bigger I'd probably have to wet it with water first but yeah it's giving me a really beautiful texture there a bit of Persian green and that first color was olive green just for your reference A little bit of clinocordon gold hue and some more olive green. This is actually quite nice. I really like this paper. It's also creating a really nice sound. For those of you who are watching it for ASMR 
a little bit of ochre. Some Van Dyke brown. Some there. Yeah, see how beautifully it runs. I really do like this paper. It probably wouldn't work if you were going to work on something extremely detailed. It does have, you know, quite a bit of texture. But for something like this, that's perfect. Probably even for larger artworks. brush is alright as well. I like that it actually holds more water than you would think. And I think that's the deal with calligraphy brushes, they do, but I don't think that's a very good quality one. Well, it was very cheap, as I said, just a couple of bucks, so you can't really expect incredible quality from something that cheap, but it is quite fun to work with. It is a little bit fluffy, but again, you know, especially when the water runs out, so it becomes, it sort of loses its shape a little bit, but I guess that's what happens with these sort of, uh, um, you know, Japanese style calligraphy brushes. Yeah, I'm loving all the textures that this paper is giving me. Okay, so next I am going to apply salt. Now, for those of you that haven't seen my watercolor textures video, I would suggest that you do. So now... I'm not going to apply it everywhere, just in some areas. And you'd probably remember what I said about it being sometimes, you know, you can get a different effect depending on the paper. I've never tried this technique on this paper, so it might not work. So this is a very fun experiment. Um, and even if it doesn't work, it'll still give us little dark sort of like spots, which is which can be cool texture as well. But let's have a look what happens. Let's have a look what happens. Oh, it's already working. I can see it already working. Okay, so it has been um, about 25 minutes. Most of the areas around the, our little guy here are dry but the areas in the corners i guess where the paper warped a little bit in the water enough are still a bit damp so what i'm going to do is i'm not going to remove the salt at this stage but i'm going to carry on working on the crocodile and fingers crossed the ink is completely and fully dry and i would not need to worry <laughs> about it running we can do a little test and see yeah i think it's I think it's okay. Wow, awesome. Okay, so now I am going to go for some colors. Now the crocodile here is a little bit sort of a somewhat golden, greeny golden, but not green. There's no green in them at all. And very light, very lightly colored. Oh, in some areas I think it is starting to run a little bit, the ink. I mean, but it's okay. I just won't add any gray in there. Should be fine. Okay, so some more color. 
I think it's happening especially in the ears where there's quite a bit of ink. And you see because this is quite a different technique, it's a technique of working with the pen first and then adding the color second, you get this um, thing where you don't really need to worry about painting the texture and because you already have all this in here. Maybe I'll go for a little bit of brighter yellow here by the neck. Even maybe a lemon yellow. Because remember, our ink is a little bit mixing in. So it will be dulling down our colors naturally. Now let's have some more quinacridone gold. And I'll even put a little pop of orange. I just want to make them a little bit warmer to bring them up from that sort of greeny, bluey, browny background. You see, now I'm not worried about the texture. Everything is there in pencil. So now only adding little bits and pieces in with the color. And there. Okay, now I'm going to grab a smaller brush and I'm going to work on the eye. Now the eye is also a bit yellowy, a little bit yellowy, but a little bit more. Let's make it a little bit more intense. see a little bit of pink just above the eye. I'm not sure if it's the coloration of the skin or the reflection of um, the light of something but it's there and it looks quite pretty so I'll pop that in as well. And then there's a little bit of that. Yeah, maybe it's like a coloring around the folds of the eye or something because there's a bit of pink around the eye. Okay, I'm also gonna go for Van Dyke Brown and add some shadow. Just a little bit of shadow in the eye of a crocodile. How weird. The weird things that we get onto when we paint and draw. So you see now with a small brush I'm going more into detail with some of the shadows. And also um when you know when you're painting if for example you want to create an artwork like this but you don't have the pen that you know doesn't run underwater because you see this one says it's waterproof and even then i guess maybe if i would have left it for a day to dry it would have been absolutely fine but if you don't have a pen and you don't feel like going to the shop, so maybe where you are, you know, everything's closed because this is 2020 and no predictions for what's going to happen tomorrow. What you can do is you can create your pencil drawing first and then apply your washes of paint. And then when everything is dry, you can do the same thing with a black ink, um, to, but already on top of your watercolor painting. So just a little tip if, in case if you're in a situation where you want to do it, but you can't really because you don't have the paint that is resistant to water. Okay, 
and I'll go again for a really bright yellow just to brighten this guy up a little bit and maybe in a couple other places I quite like that pop of color I know it's not as bright on the image, on the photograph but I quite like how it makes him how it makes him pop just get a little bit of this dark red, I don't have the name for this because this paint is really old, this particular block I don't know if you guys have noticed but I've updated my watercolor set it was really old, some of the paint was so old that it wouldn't that it wouldn't um, revive with water anymore so I had to clean it all up, throw it all out I actually have a video on how I set my watercolor palette up and tips on how to choose watercolor paint and things on Patreon so you guys can check it out or make sure that you watch it if you already are supporting me there so just a little bit of that sort of a darker shade Yeah, this paper is very nice for things like this and probably would work beautifully for larger scale work as well. I think this is 300 grams, so it's not, you know, it's, it's heavy, but it's nothing out of the ordinary for watercolor. But I think if you want it to do it in a lot of detail, then you probably have, you know, like a little miniature watercolor, then you would want something smoother and something that not that's not as creepy, perhaps, as well. Okay, so... I'd say that that's that for now and um, take off the masking tape let's see how it works with masking tape if masking tape rips too much oh yeah it is written quite a bit more so than my other paper that I use because this hasn't been on long at all so yeah, those of you who are watching it for the review of this paper this is what you can see happens with it so it does rip more than usual but then again, I did not do that thing where you um, soften it on your clothes or anything like this but it is because I wanted to do a test on this on this paper so let's see how this side goes mm -hmm. okay I'll just start picking it from the other side Okay, I would have to smooth it out later. You can smooth the paper afterwards, but for now I'm just going to fix a little bit of this edge here. Okay, so now I have smoothed the paper out a little bit and you do it like this. That's why I had to remove my nail polish. Um, And then you can smooth it back. I mean, it's still a little bit visible, but it does not, you know, stick out or stand out. It actually looks quite cool. Okay, so now what I want to do um, is I want to do some finishing touches on this guy because now pretty much everything is dry. So I want to just add a little bit more of the black, you know, with the pen again. And I want to just in some areas a little bit more shadow and a little bit more texture I 
Okay, so all the little finishing touches with the black and a little bit on the nose there as well. Some of the things, you know, if I've used paint that is quite opaque, um, you know, it can cover the pin lines. So it's good to go over some of them again. A little bit more mark making around the teeth. not least I am going to add a little bit of um, gouache a little bit of gouache and um, apply a highlight I pretty much never use white watercolor because I don't mix white with other colors and also for things like that watercolor is just not opaque enough even when they say that it's, um, you know, sometimes brands claim that this watercolor is very opaque and on the test you just, it just doesn't work like that. So here are just a couple of little spots with the gouache to give it a little sort of sparkle in the eye. As, it looking, as it's looking at you and thinking, hmm, one day I'll be big and I'll come back to eat you up. Okay, so there we go. So this is pretty much done now. Can I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and press the notification bell. I would also like to say big big thank you to all of the people who are supporting me on Patreon. I hope you have a lovely day and as always, thank you for painting with me.